So, um, while Reverend Sylvia has been away, we've had some amazing speakers here um, every week, and today will probably be no exception. And I know it won't be an exception because until he said it coming out here that he hadn't been here in four years, I thought it was last year. So <laughs> that, means, that means that he left an impression on me, I know, uh, the last time he was here. And whatever he said stuck because I thought it was last year. So he said it was four years ago. We're going with it. So um, before meditation, I want to introduce our speaker. Uh, it's, it's Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson. Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson has been a lifelong learner with a passion for self-development, personal transformation, transmutation, and transfiguration. He lives his bliss as a teacher, American Sign Language interpreter, a performing artist, visual artist, author, martial artist, mentor, interpreter, I'm sorry, father, grandfather, and more. His personal mission is to live, move, and be Active, A-C-T-I-V-E, which stands for Authentic, Compassionate, Transparent, Inspired, Vibrant, and Empowered Member of Society, who serves to educate, elucidate, and emancipate people and communities to awaken and empower themselves. Through his service and through the transformative teachings, technologies, and practices of New Thought, these people and communities recognize, realize, and materialize their full divine potential. As a licensed Center of Spiritual Living Minister, he currently serves as the senior, senior minister of the Center of Spiritual Living Greater Baltimore. Recently appointed CSL Diversity and Inclusion Commissioner and is part of the steering committee for a newly revised CSL World Ministry of Prayer. For our meditation and message today, let's give a very warm unity welcome back to Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson. <laughs> to prepare for meditation today, we will sing our thoughts, our prayers. Micromanaging of where this last breath goes. 
They're simply breathing right now in the present. And as we anchor into this present moment by way of the breath, we deepen our understanding that the body is not breathing itself. But that as Ernest Holmes said, God in me, as me, is me. Therefore, this is God breathing itself as each and every one of us. This breath, God's breath. This awareness, God's awareness. There is only one power and one presence. And it is everything and everywhere in this eternal now moment. And so we anchor into that awareness that God is present right here, right now. Not simply in us, not just with us, but that if God is all there is, there is nothing else, then God is showing up as each and every one of us. That from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet, it's all God and it's all good. That from the surface of our skin to the deepest particles of quantum matter, energy, particles, waves, and atoms, it's all God and it's all good, incarnating, individualizing itself right here, right now, as every one of us. And so in this meditation, we anchor to this realization that God being exactly what we are, then everything that God is, we must also be. And so we breathe, recognizing that if God is love, I am that. I am. If God is infinite power and creation itself, I am that. I am. If God is more than simply omnipotent, but God is omnipotence itself, I am that. I am. All that God is, all that life is, I am that. I am. And so in this breath, we anchor in deeper and deeper. With this breath, we become more and more present to the truth of our being, and we take this breath and this realization into the silence. As we come back to this awareness of the room, of our bodies, of the temperature, we recognize that this breath is always the opportunity to be reminded of the present, to be reminded of the present within the present moment, meaning the gift that this present moment awareness always offers. And so as we are comfortable, we return our gaze to the room, stretch if need be, and prepare. And so it is.
that God is all that is the left side of my body, but this pinky, this one pinky, like, it's missing some spirit. Like, I need y'all to pray over it because it's missing something. None of us can be missing any of what God is. Butterworth then says in The Flow of Life, The word I comes from a Sanskrit root word, which means fountain. This is beautifully significant, for when the mind is, for when the mind is remolded from within, you are synchronized with the omnipresent flow of God, which streams out in the very act of seeing. You see from the consciousness of God. Thus, you actually project this consciousness toward anything that your eye beholds. What you see, you become, because the outforming process of the mind makes it so. So if we use, and, and slight tangent, whether it is the actual physical eye, or the inner eye, or the third eye, it doesn't matter because somewhere we are seeing. The people that have no vision perish. Somewhere we have vision. And that which we have vision about is either life-affirming or non-life-affirming. We get to choose. When we look at life, inner eye or outer eye, and we see lack, scarcity, confusion, whatever, then we're buying into consciousness to create more of it. I will lift my eyes to the mountains, to the hills, from whence comes that consciousness that helps me remain in a consciousness of. See, because if we're walking around like this, and all we're seeing is here, then when someone says, wow, it's a beautiful sky, look at the stars, look at the rainbow, look at the something, I'm like, all I see is dirt, all I see is bugs. I, what are you talking about? You crazy. Like, that's all I'm going to see, because it's what I'm focusing on. It's what I'm anchoring my consciousness on. But if I give myself permission to stand in the truth that says, God is all there is. It's all there is. That means this microphone is God expressing. These glasses, God expressing. This jacket, God expressing. This person, this height, God expressing. Everything is God in expression then what am I now invited to shift or change in my consciousness when I look out and see 400 individual expressions of God? There is no more me and other. It's only all of God expressing. It's far easier to find peace and unity and connection and love and joy when I look into your eyes and I know that God, what God is, sees its own reflection in you right now. Amen. Namaste. That which is the divine showing up in through it as me sees itself outside and it bows to its grandeur. Why do we not bow to our own grandeur? <laughs> to shift our consciousness and recognize that if God is magnificence, the essence of, then we get to choose to live a magnificent life. Because what it is, we are. See, way back when, Emma Curtis Hopkins, Judge Thomas Troward, Eric Butterworth, the Fillmores, like all of the Ernest Holmes, all these New Thought pioneers, they were no nonsense. Emma Curtis Hopkins said, there is no sin, sickness, or death. That's pretty much all or nothing statement. There is none. Because God cannot be sick, God cannot die, God cannot sin, and what it is, I am. What in our life would change if we adopted that and said, knowing that what I am is God, and therefore all of the goodness of creation is showing up right here, right now. When I think, it's God thinking. When I speak, it's God speaking. When these hands serve, it's God serving. What would change? So today we're talking about specifically, as we already know, Ray loves acronyms. So I made an acronym out of, it should be, in, I think it's in your program that way, Valentine, right? 
So keep in mind, what we're talking about is being, the art of how do I be, whatever it is we're going to talk about, right? So if I were to say, what does it mean to be a mom? Like, what does that mean? Is there something specific that you have to wake up and it's like, okay, I'm a mom. Oh, in order for me to remind myself that I'm a mom, I have to go wake up the children. Like somehow you forget that it's what you are. Whether you wake them up or not, you're still that which it is. Musicians are musicians whether they're playing music or not. It's what they are. That I can guarantee you that if it was raining right now and there was a certain rhythm to the rain, somebody's foot would be like, oh, wait a minute, that's a sport. <laughs> like, because that's all there is. So we're going to talk about what it means to be Valentine. V is for victory. What does it mean to be victory? Now, there may be a slight mm, and we may say, well, be victorious. And I say, well, okay, I got you, and I got you, because sometimes we have to play the name game. But if you're being victorious, then there has to be something to defeat. And I'm saying, if what you are is victory itself, then there is no enemy that can stand before you. Like nothing can stand in front of you when what you are being is victory. How many people in here play chess, checkers, tic-tac-toe, something? <laughs> Remember, if I were to say, uh, I want to play, I'm going to play uh, checkers with you, and you know for a fact that I can't lose, like you know it, for whatever reason, I can't lose, do you still want to play checkers with me? Yes. Okay, so that's her. That's her. <laughs> in the game of Monopoly or whatever it is. It's like it's not fun. Part of the fun is the challenge in. That's why we watch football or hockey or whatever it is we watch. Because there's the, there's the challenge. And if there's no challenge, it's like, oh, that was it. One move, that was it. I'm, I'm not playing. But if we stand in this, this essence of, this consciousness of what it means to be victory itself, then what around us now changes? Because then, everything we lay our eyes upon, that which is victory itself, sees victory. Everything we speak is spoken through the filter of what it means to be victory in expression. See, if you're going to do that, then you can't talk about losing anymore. Because it changes the conversation. How do we start standing in this awareness, this consciousness of that? Because God is victory. The essence of nothing, because there is nothing other than God. So there is nothing that can say, hey, God, I want it. There is nothing. Right? It's only God. So God represents victory itself. How do I embody that? How do I bring that into my thoughts, my words, my actions, my interactions with everyone else, who also must be victory in expression? Which means, when I get into conversation with someone and they want to talk about being a loser, is it mine to do to help change the conversation, to upgrade? In the same way that we would say to someone, hey, Nana, I think you want to upgrade your phone. <laughs> like, nobody uses flip phones anymore. <laughs> like, we, we say this, and I know some of y'all out there do, I was just saying. <laughs> no, but, like, we, we engage in this conversation with folks about our computers and whatever, but not about our spirituality, when that's what matters most. When love matters most, we don't engage in the difficult conversations to up-level the game. A, awakening. So it is said that in, in the Buddhist doctrine, the Buddhist teaching, that when Siddhartha Gautama became enlightened, became the Buddha, the awakened one, that so profound was this shift in consciousness that it awakened all beings, past, present, and future. And I specified awakening 
Because if God is ever expanding consciousness, then there is not a point where we have awakened. Oh, Shanti, Shanti. No, we are always growing and improving and shifting. Stop letting me be a little bit. And growing and shifting and becoming more and more love, more and more light, more and more joy, more and more power forever. Not just in this body, but forever. L, be life and love. Be life and love. We have the power of life and death in our tongue. Then if you are life, then only speak life. Speak life over every family member, even the ones you don't like. Speak life over every person, even the ones you claim you don't like. Speak life over every situation here in D.C. Speak life over the roof. Speak life over everything. Speak life over the carpet. Speak life. And love. Not, not animosity. Not disgruntledness. Now, express it to get it off your chest. But don't make it your mantra. Speak life and love. Be life and love. E, excellence. What does it mean to be excellence? We know that when we talk about someone who dances, oh, she, she's such an excellent dancer. We hear excellent music. We, we see excellent art. But if you are going to be excellence, then it means everything you do upgrades to the level of being excellent. When you are washing dishes, you wash them excellently. When you sweep the floor, it is God sweeping the floor, so you do it with excellence. When you are washing windows, you do it with excellence, because God doesn't just have step. Right? God didn't just say, and I'm going to anthropomorphize this for a minute, God didn't just say, <sighs> okay, I'm going to make some planets. Mercury, Jamie, food from Mars. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Right? Like there was, there was this consciousness that said, I must create. I must be. I must live. And that's excellence in expression. What in our lives changes when we see ourselves as, because if, if we had an individual interview, one by one, one by one, one by one, and I ask you what you don't like about yourself, some way, shape, or form, we're going to say things about, you know, uh, I'm not good with numbers. I never remember names. My memory is failing. My, my, like, you're going to have the complaints. But when you are coming from a state of excellence, when that is what you are being, then even in the midst of this, because I can guarantee you, if I go over there and I hit, a master musician can say, oh, I can take that chord and turn it into something. Even though you thought it was discord, I can turn that discord into a harmony. Oh. That's excellent. We should be able to do the exact same thing with every circumstance, situation in our life. Whether it's dis-ease or disharmony or discord. Turn it back into what we know God is as that thing in expression. <laughs> in Valentine, New Thought, upgrade the level of New Thought conversation that we're having. I hear far too many times people saying, oh, unity, or oh, CSL, oh, religious science, oh, agape. It's the best kept secret. We want to shift consciousness on the face of this planet, then we can't be in the proverbial closet of New Thought any longer. It's time to step out and shine so brightly that others Wherever we are, wherever they are. And we don't have to say anything. Because when we're being it, they feel it. And simply by being in our presence, something shifts and there's an upgrade. They don't need to know what it is. But it's by our demonstrated example that everywhere we step, we leave an energetic footprint of the divine. That as soon as someone else steps in that footprint, they're like, ooh, what's... Oh, I feel it. I that felt good. I want to take this patch of land home. Like we should be leaving spiritual marks everywhere we go. Stop playing small. Upgrade what we mean by new thought. Upgrade how we live and how we talk about it. I, be inspiration itself. Be insight itself. And B, a demonstration of what it means to be connected to intuition. What is 
that mean? That means there's no more needing some teacher, some minister. One of the things that I tell people is, I'm doing this until I don't need to do this anymore. I want all of you to put me out of this role as minister. Meaning, when everybody knows their own divinity and are living it and living it oh so well, then it changes how I now minister. So then I can simply become like an, an auto mechanic or piano tuner. When you say something's out of and you need me to come and help tune it back, you need me to put the carburetor or something, I'm good. But you don't need me to sit in the car with you and now, no, 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 no. I want us to elevate in consciousness to such a degree that we are all practitioners and chaplains and ministers and gurus and all the names that we use that we know that we are that for ourselves and that for each other. And be now. Be present. Be in the moment when we continue to put our energy in what was or what might be, we're dividing the house. It's like me trying to say, I'm going to go to the left and the right at the same time. Whoa. Like sooner or later, sooner or later, something's going to give. Like sooner or later, something's going to hurt. Whether it's hurt feelings, whether it's hurt bones, something's going to... So, stop. Stop to the warring with past, present, and future. Simply be. There is nowhere in the consciousness of God where God is like... Because we know, like, in the story of Noah... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy everything. Because I realize that I made it, and I don't like what I made. And I made a mistake. So I'm going to start over. But Noah, you get the lottery. Because I'm going to say to you, your wife, your three sons and their wives, and here's what I want you to do. Here's the blueprint for the ark, and etc. But I'm wiping everything else out. That's a God of regret. That God is an anthropomorphic God that we know we don't do. God is present, always in the eternal now. So what happens when we step into that moment of what is present now? I can't, like in the meditation I said, we breathe. Do we worry about the next breath? How many of us wake up in the morning and say, hey, hold on, I gotta save up, I don't know, I don't know. I'm gonna put a couple in here, save them. By lunchtime, I might need one or two. We, we don't do that, nor do we say, where's it going? Oh, man. We don't worry about where it's going either. We simply breathe in the present moment. We can't breathe yesterday. We can't breathe tomorrow. We breathe now. So what happens when we bring our consciousness to the point of power? Because this is what we change right here and right now. And lastly, be evolutionary. Be what it means to always be on the cutting edge of growth and change and upgrade. Always be on the cutting edge of being revolutionary and new. New thought should never become old thought. And even when we say new thought, ancient wisdom, I got you, I got you. But the ancient wisdom should be applied today in a way that is new and evolutionary today. Because we don't say um, uh, something, something, new thought, ancient food, and we go and we, we open up the casserole that was made a hundred years ago. The recipe might have been made a hundred years ago, but the casserole is being made today anew. So the doctrine, the words, the books, the texts, the Sanskrit, the whatever, that may be ancient and may be old and may be whatever. But if we're not applying it today, if we're not living it today, if we're not doing it in the moment today, then it's not doing anybody any good. All we're doing is reciting quotes and reciting scriptures and changing absolutely nothing. How many of us would go to a doctor if, if the doctor's advertisement was, 
Hello, my name is Dr. Anderson. I practice medicine that was created in the year 2 BC. I use this chisel and this hammer most of the time. Sometimes this bowl of bugs. Let me help you fix your teeth. How many would go? Why not? Because they're not using new technology to help heal. It happens the same way if we don't keep this new thought philosophy and ancient wisdom current and new and always growing and evolving always. So be evolutionary. Remember that Maya Angelou said, and still I rise. Keep that in the forefront, and still I rise. When this happens, know but what God is, and still I rise. When this happens in this situation, in this situation, and still I rise, because that which God is cannot be defeated. That which God is cannot be defeated. That which God is cannot be defeated. And if what God is is what you are, then you can't be defeated either. By anything. Nothing that can defeat you. Nothing that can cast you down. That when this is what you are being, victorious, victory itself, awakening, always on the cutting edge. When you are being like when you are being Valentine, all the time, then you recognize and realize that life is good and oh so good and always good. And so it is. Thank <laughs> you.